Hi, welcome to the Q&A recording of the film Ashwang, playing as part of 10th European Union Human Rights Film Days. Joining us now is the director of the film, Alex Ein Arumpak uh, from Berlin. Hi, Alex. Hi, everyone. I am Alex Arumpak. I'm the director of Aswang. Mm -hmm. So, um, Aswang is your first feature film, Alex, uh, in Philippines, your hometown. After Rodrigo Duterte became the president, thousands of men, women and children were killed in the war against drugs, uh, mostly poor people and mostly murdered at the hands of police officers. So in your film, you fearlessly documented the growing violence in your country uh, by following the story of characters like Jomari. Uh, so what were the main reasons for you to share this story as a film? Well, actually, I still live in Manila, so I uh, I divide my time between these two places, um, and it was just a very shocking um, incident for us when it's when President Duterte was voted, um, the murders immediately started, and journalists picked this up um, very soon. So there was a lot of photographs, and then I went and uh, filmed everything as well. Um, it's very hard to look away. Uh, if you see these things. And this was, of course, my biggest motivation, just because I could not um, not do anything. Yeah. And, and you, you have this uh, past uh, background of a journalist, actually, right? Yes. Uh, well, I'm a television producer. I produce uh, long-form current affairs uh, for TV in the Philippines. And this was why it was not very difficult for me to do this kind of um, film. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, the shooting of, and the editing of the film must be really hard uh, while you witness a lot of violence, death and sorrow on the streets of Manila. So uh, you got involved in the lives of many people. Uh, so I'm sure emotions intensified at some point and maybe it must be overwhelming sometimes. Can you tell us the difficulties of shooting and also editing of the film? Mm -hmm. Um, yes. In the first few months, uh, of course, I was filming a lot. Um, it took some time getting to, to get used to it. Um, but I would not um, look at the material for months. So I would film and then just transfer it and forget about it. Uh, and when I finally do look at the material, it was like, it's a very different experience, you know, um, because finally I have to confront what I was seeing. Um, it's, I don't have a camera with me in between me, myself and what was, what I was filming. It was just now me looking at what I was supposed to be seeing before. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was very, I think I found it even more difficult, uh, looking at the material than, uh, filming it actually. It's very strange. Um, there were, I think the most difficult moments for me as well was uh, filming children, um, children who were killed and children who just lost their parents. Um, because I just don't understand. I mean, children don't know how to process this. Um, and based on, you know, meeting a boy like Jomari, who I saw had his mother as the center of his world, um, I could really understand that, you know, Parents are children's, you know, it's their center. It's their, you know, point of, um, it's their still point. And having lost that, uh, yes, I, I could just imagine how, um, how difficult it must have been for them. Uh, and so that was actually the most difficult part um, for filming for me and for editing. Um, yes, I looked at the material with editors, with two editors, uh, brilliant editors who, um, help me process things as well, you know, because sometimes things were too violent. Um, things are too difficult to see on screen, even for us, even for me. And so this was a, it was good to have other eyes um, help you uh, look at it and process these things. But I mean, I can imagine how hard it is to look at these materials over and over during the editing process. So. Um, very successful. You would be surprised. You would be surprised. Actually, I think after a while, um, you get used to it, um, sadly, um, which also says a lot about how, um, what's the word, how you can get used to violence very easily. 
Uh, and so we have to be careful as well with the images of violence that we put uh, on screen. Because I noticed that people, if you confront them with these things, uh, people close up um, very easily. I think it's a, it's a defensive factor that we have, you know, our de defensive reaction. So I think um, there had to be a way to somehow present this, these images of violence um, without putting it too much on the viewer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so talking about children um, in the film, especially during the scenes with Jamari and his friends, uh, like you said, we see that these children internalize violence as a part of their lives. And uh, one of them says his dream is to become a soldier. Other one would like to become a policeman. And they're imitating the violence on the streets in their games. Um, did you confront physical and uh, psychological limitations when witnessing these situations? Actually, you mentioned this a little bit, but um, I was just wondering how did you maintain your distance with the characters? And mm. mm -hmm. uh, this is still a, a, a process I'm I'm going through right now. Um, but the selection of characters was, I realized, very much based on how I felt um with them because i was following a lot of characters uh, and in the end i think we ended up with the people that um that of course reflected very well on camera and that was because they i had a good feeling with them as well you know i had a good relationship with them somehow um of course having a boy filming a boy like that um without his mother at first that's um that's a bit edgy uh, that's a bit um you know it i was always unsure about it and i always knew that i could lose uh, this protagonist at the very end um in fact that was the entire film i wasn't sure who was going to be there and at the very end because people would always be afraid <laughs> they would say oh i'm afraid of the police or i'm afraid of someone coming back to me so i wasn't sure um i was surprised as well to see this kind of violence on children um, and the reason why it's on the film was because I was also surprised, or, you know, it, it surprised me how much it permeated into the very smallest, um, little children, uh, littlest elements of our society. Yes. It's really scary, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I believe that your film was released in your hometown, uh, Philippines. Yeah. So how were the reactions of the people uh, about the film? Yes, we were supposed to release it in a festival in March, but uh, of course everything got canceled. And sometime in um, July, the Philippine government uh, imposed what they call an anti-terror law, um, which was basically what they were doing, um, you know, like getting people, holding people, um, but um, it was going to be legal. So we released it right before this anti-terror law was put into place. Um, we, had it, we did a limited release first for 30 hours, and I think almost half a million people watched it online. The feedback was very big. Um, it was actually overwhelming. I, wasn't sur I was very surprised about this reaction. But what I realized was what I've been seeing all this time for two years I just took it for granted that everyone else knew this. Um, but in fact, there's a big gap between what people are just seeing on the news, on social media, versus something as expanded as a documentary film. Um, and when people saw that, um, the stories behind the news, uh, I, I, it resonated to them, it affected them very much. Um, and I had so much um, feedback about this. And what touched me the most actually was victims, um, you know, orphans or the, whose parents got killed, husbands got killed, messaging me saying that um, for the first time they, they felt um, not alone, you know, seeing the film and seeing how the reaction was of a lot of people, thousands of people supporting them, um, then they felt uh, that they had allies and that was very important for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just wondering about this one last question. Um, there is this repeating line in the film. Uh, whenever they say an Aswang is around, what they really mean is be afraid. 
Uh, can you tell us a bit why did you choose this sentence as a repeating line and also why did you choose the title of the film as Aswang very shortly? Mm. Yeah, it was actually the first idea that came to mind. I wasn't sure. Aswang is this mythological monster that the Philippines has. Everyone knows about it. Every children, even the youngest children know about it because um, it's used to um, make you fearful, you know, makes you go to bed and, you know, no questions asked. Um, it was the first idea that came to mind. I wasn't sure if I was going to sustain it, but it was just a guide for me um, how to film the how to make the film it was also it also helped me because um when people ask okay what film are you making i say a swang and they don't expect a documentary they just expect a fiction film so it allowed me to go under the radar film under the radar for so long um and then at the very end because the aswang was used historically in the Philippines as a, as a tool for fear mongering, you know, um, authorities used it to spread fear in the countryside so that there would be no more rebellion against the government. Um, and this was used in the 50s. And I just thought about it now because when I first saw the images, I thought that this was really just spreading a message of fear. Um, and this was what President Duterte was doing. He wanted to control people with fear. Uh, and this was, uh, yes, this was actually the reason why we used Estuang. Mm -hmm. This line uh, that just kept repeating again and again, um, this was just a, a style that we used also because um, the Aswang never really manifests in the film except in words. Uh, and so we tried to describe this monster as good as we can with words only and its actions uh, and the feeling that it uh, contributes. So this is why it was like this, like a chant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Alex, thank you very much. I think your film perfectly you. portrays the terror and the systematic human rights violation uh, in Manila. Thank you for sharing this remarkable and powerful documentary with us. Uh, and good luck with your upcoming works. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye bye.